Right now on WCNC Charlotte at noon, the latest on the coronavirus in the Carolinas. Mecklenburg County preparing to give an update at 2 p.m. today. Right now, there are nearly 1,600 cases in the county. The governor also is going to have an update. That's happening at 3 p.m. today. He's expected to address a number of things, including the ongoing situation in Gaston County, where a stay-at-home uh, order has been lifted to some degree. We're going to carry both of those press conferences live as they happen and streaming in the WCNC app. Good afternoon. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Ben Thompson. Here are the latest coronavirus numbers in the Carolinas. In North Carolina, we have now passed that 10,000 mark. Take a look. 10,509, 378 deaths. South Carolina, nearly 6,000 cases with 232 deaths. We'll get to all that coming up in just a minute, but first let's take a look at the forecast. Hundreds of folks in the Charlotte area without power today after storms knocked down trees and power lines last night. A tree fell in the front of a home on Walnut Avenue in West Charlotte, shutting down the road this morning. That tree pulled down power lines with it. Right now, hundreds of people without power in our region. Here's a look at the latest outage numbers from Duke Energy. Mecklenburg County, more than 2,500 people without power and Gaston County reporting nearly 800 people in the dark. Let's go ahead and send it over to Chris Mulcahy. He has been tracking those storms overnight into this morning and they're starting to clear out. We might see some rain, but nothing serious this afternoon. Yeah, nothing serious, Ben, so that's going to be the good news. And those storms could have been a lot worse, especially if they arrived a little bit earlier in the day, especially since it got to around 80 degrees. But luckily for us, it's only going to be a spotty rain shower, maybe one little cell that could provide a little heavy rain, but only, I think, 30 to 40 percent of the area is going to see a brief shower to end the afternoon and begin the evening. So the three weather words for today, number one, breezy. We're still going to have wind gusts up to about 25 miles per hour. We have that shower potential, as I mentioned, but it's also cooler, especially compared to what we had yesterday. So up in Blowing Rock, we are looking at a darker sky right now. So that is looking at just what's left over from the system. It's also a precursor to maybe a few darker clouds that are going to be rolling in a little bit later on in the afternoon. Here's that mean line of rain that rolled through over two inches of rain for most of us across the area, exceptions for some areas down to the southeast. But if you look off towards the northwest over in Kentucky, West Virginia, a few of these showers are going to be wrapping back in. So since you are going to have that potential that is going to be a better chance for more showers to start to move their way off towards the east as we're completing the afternoon so our future cast is showing spotty showers and in the afternoon heading into the evening by the late evening everything's pretty much kaput we're drying out and then we're heading into a nice little dry trend temperatures right now 61 degrees we're still warming up you're going to be seeing some spots of sunshine here and there it'll be cloudy then a little bit brighter cloudy a little bit brighter and then eventually i think we're going to have a brighter end of the day even with those hit or miss rain showers to to complete the afternoon afternoon highs i have us in the upper 60s i still think with the power of that sunshine since we had a warmer start it's going to get us there best chance for rain will be between mainly about five to eight o'clock it looks like across the charlotte area but over the next four days if you want warmer temperatures don't worry about it still going to be a little bit cooler tomorrow we're back above average on saturday the 80s back to back sunday and monday so if you're searching for those warmer days well they're right around the corner ben chris thank you sir appreciate it well, it is hard to believe that it has been exactly one year since that deadly shooting at UNC Charlotte. And today, the university is going to hold a day of remembrance in honor of the two students who lost their lives on that day. This morning, CMPD held a wreath lane ceremony at the campus. WCNC Charlotte's Billie Jean Shaw has more on all the tributes today. Good afternoon, Ben. You know, a lot of students are still trying to kill a year later from this shooting. A few of them coming out to show their respects, even in the midst of this pandemic. I also spoke to a survivor who says when he walked into this building last year, he wasn't sure if he was going to make it out alive after coming face to face with the gunman. The sounds of gunshots. Probably at least 10, maybe more. It sounded kind of like firecrackers, like Bang, bang, bang. Piercing screams. You hear those like screams of, like horror movies and stuff, but like they're really bad. It was some of the worst screams I've ever heard. Oh my God. And terrifying sights of people running for their lives. A chair had been pushed in front of the door and a girl fell on the chair and people were running over her. Are forever engraved in Tristan Phil's memory. Ran to a nearby building, hid there for a while, and then we um, eventually got let out by police. Tristan is a survivor of the tragic shooting one year ago at UNC Charlotte. The 20-year-old snapped this photo just moments before his 
former classmate. The confessed shooter opened fire, randomly targeting students in the auditorium on April 30 of 2019, the last day of classes. Two people were killed, four others injured. Tristan witnessed it all and posted these messages on Snapchat to warn other students. A year later, the junior biology major says he is still affected by the tragedy. The smallest things like a loud noise or even the setup of a classroom remind him of what could have been his last day alive. Most classes are okay, but I had like drop out of one last semester. Like I just like kept getting like flashbacks in that class for some reason. Over the year, the thought of transferring to another college or dropping out of school altogether has often crossed Tristan's mind, but every time he feels discouraged, he remembers the meaning of UNCC strong and knows this tragedy is also his testimony of perseverance. Because like I realized live every day to like keep going. Might as well try hard and not waste my opportunity. And Tristan is back home in High Point right now. He's considering driving down to Lake Flower on the steps of Kennedy Hall where the shooting happened. But if he doesn't come, there is a day of remembrance being streamed online by this campus. That'll be from 5 to 10 this evening. Reporting from UNC Charlotte's Billy Jean Shaw, WCNC Charlotte. It's hard to believe it has been a year. Billy Jean, thank you for that. Turning now to our coronavirus coverage, more than a billion dollars in relief money could be on the way to folks here in North Carolina. Here's a look at that and other stories across the Carolinas today. <laughs> The state Senate voting to approve a measure that would direct $1.4 billion in federal aid to schools, businesses, and residents. Today, the House plans to vote on its own relief proposal. A tattoo parlor owner was arrested after ignoring Governor Cooper's stay-at-home order. The owner of Apex Tattoo Factory near Raleigh says he was unable to get a small business loan or unemployment help. His arrest comes after several reopened North Carolina rallies in recent weeks. Beaches are reopening in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. This includes access to public beaches and parking areas. The city is reminding folks to continue to keep safe social distancing. And that's what's happening across the Carolinas. Meanwhile, South Carolina's state uh, superintendent has put together a task force. It convened just minutes ago in a virtual news conference. That task force will provide recommendations for summer and fall school operations. The task force is made up of educators, administrators, that sort of thing. We'll have much more on this later today on WCNC Charlotte News at 5. The number of Americans filing for, filing for unemployment benefits continues to climb. The Labor Department reporting 3.84 million people filing for first time unemployment benefits last week. That's slightly worse than many analysts projected. This brings the total of Americans, total number of Americans who have filed for unemployment over the past six weeks to more than 30 million. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said yesterday the unemployment rate is likely to rise above the 10 percent mark. Heading now overseas, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson deferring his parental leave to get back to work after welcoming a new baby just yesterday. The Prime Minister recently got out of the hospital, as you might recall, from having COVID-19. Meanwhile, the death toll has been significantly higher, making the UK the second deadliest country in Europe when it comes to the coronavirus. NBC's Cal Perry reports from London. In the end, we will defeat coronavirus. Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, back to work today. He has had quite the month. He survived the coronavirus earlier this month and had a baby yesterday. The Prime Minister will certainly urge people to stay home as that curve has not yet started its downward trend, though it does seem to be sort of flattening out. The next review of that lockdown is supposed to take place on May the 7th, but we've already seen people who are showing some fatigue from the lockdown, people out and about in the last couple of days. Now that said, the death toll was markedly higher in just the past few days as officially reported by the UK government, up by thousands because the UK government is now including some of those folks who have died in care homes and who have died outside of hospitals. There's been a lot of criticisms that we are just not getting a full picture of who is dying outside of hospitals in this country. The numbers now make the UK the second deadliest country in Europe when it comes to the coronavirus. Cal Perry, NBC News, London. Well, Costco announcing that they will require all customers to wear face masks. That takes effect Monday, May 4th. The retailer saying it's a move to protect its members and employees. We've seen a lot of your responses on social media to this. And Wake Up Charlotte's Rachel Lumberg is breaking it down for us. 
We're tracking a lot of reaction on social media to Costco announcing that they are now requiring face masks on everybody that comes into their store. Thousands of you guys posting a reaction to our Facebook story on this. Almost a thousand comments at this point that I'll get to in just a minute. So this goes into effect, the new policy, starting on Monday in just a few days. Everybody has got to bring their own face masks. So they're not offering them at the store. You have to bring and wear your own before you're going to be allowed in. The the only thing that it doesn't apply to are children that are under the age of two. They don't have to wear a face mask. This week on the shows, we've been talking about JetBlue and other airline industries when it comes to wearing face masks. They're the first airline to actually require passengers to have a face mask on when they're on board their flights. Now, we do know a lot of people have been encouraging it, recommending it. We've been seeing a ton of people as you're out at the stores wearing them as well. Walmart, Harris Teeter, two big stores that are recommended it, but we want to know, do you think that they should also be requiring face masks like Costco is at this point? We've had a live survey up throughout the earlier morning from Wake Up Charlotte, and it was pretty consistent, 60-40% of you guys voting, 60% yes, you think that all stores should require face masks, and a roughly 40% of you guys voting no. Getting to some comments now, Patricia thinks that everyone should wear masks in the stores. Trina says she's no longer going to shop at Costco because of this. Paul does not want the government or stores dictating what he should do. And then Bonnie says, if you're going to require masks, she thinks that you should also be providing them then. Join us on this conversation. Text us if you don't have our number. It's 704-329-3600 or tag us on Facebook and Twitter, WCNC Charlotte. Back to you. Rachel, thanks. As many states throughout the country are preparing to slowly reopen some businesses, workers are wondering what their new normal might look like. How will your office change? Will you still have to sit right next to a coworker? Jane Wells talks with two of the top office design firms who are already working with clients. Your office may look like this right now, mostly empty, but as employees eventually start to return to work, things are gonna change. I don't think we'll ever go back to the density that we have today. Now office designers are working with clients to quote, de-densify the area. So we're looking at the entryways to buildings, how do they start to space apart? How do they navigate the lobby? Rendering suggests the new office will have wider corridors and one-way foot traffic and few, if any, common areas for now. I would say that uh, conference rooms are probably off limits for a while. I think even though we might be under one roof, we're probably still gonna be doing Zoom meetings. And welcome back to high-walled cubicles made famous 20 years ago in the film Office Space. If they move my desk one more time, then, then, I, then I'm quitting. And what about the bathroom? Maybe you can open the door with your elbow and have touchless soap dispensers, touchless sinks for washing, even hands-free towel dispensers. But the toilet stall is traditionally not hands-free. So there are ways that we can start thinking through even incorporating voice activation to open doors and the like that will make it an easy experience. But nothing may be easier than working from home and surveys show a lot of us like it. I think the trend to work from home will continue, it, but people are looking at doing it more on a part-time basis. But most designers say that while the office may change, it is not going away. People are social creatures. We require and we need and we crave that social interaction. And the collaboration that happens in the office is very real. For CNBC Business News, I'm Jane Wells. Still to come, the FDA.